Well, it's good to be with you this evening. We're going to continue to look at our little book here, Parables from Nature, uh, written by J. Calvin Reed. And tonight's uh, story is called Boulder Down. No king of Aunt Ovia had ever been more kind and generous to his subject than King Justice. By his order, his land had been divided into ten equal parts and given over ten groups of ants known as colonies. Each colony organized its own government and was free to do as it pleased, except that for the use of the king's land. King Justice required a certain amount of grain be brought to him at the time of harvest each year. For a while, all went well in Aunt Ovia. Then one colony, led by a bandit chieftain whose name was Swindle, rebelled and failed to send the king and failed to sing, send King Justice his share of the harvest. <clears throat> Surely there must be some misunderstanding, said King Justice. I will send a messenger and find out why I've not received my part of the grain. Now Chief Swindle had built himself a fortress down at the bottom of the narrow gorge beside a stream. At the entrance of the gorge, he stationed guards to spread the alarm and in case of attack. In the fortress of in the fortress, an army of three thousand ants was kept in readiness for the battle. When Swindle heard that the king was sending a messenger, he laughed in his cruel heart and said, The old king must be getting soft. I had expected his army. Then he gave orders that his guards should seize the messengers at the entrance of the gorge beat him and send him home. The same treatment was given to two other messengers sent later by the king. What shall I do? Justice asked, said to himself. To think that my former subjects could be so selfish and cruel, surely there is some way to reach their hearts by kindness. I know what I'll do. I'll send them my only son, whom I love best of all, Surely they will respect and listen to him, and he will be able to win back their loyalty. When the hard-hearted Swindle heard the king's son was coming, he called for his army captains and said, This is our big chance. Justice has only one son. If we get rid of him, then when the old king dies, we can take over the whole kingdom. So they killed the king's son. The king's heart was broken when he heard what had happened. I will show patience no longer, he said, addressing the commander of his army. Swindle and his rebels must be destroyed and their land given to other ants who can be trusted. Sir, said the commander, I have a plan already mapped out. By this time tomorrow, no one of the rebel ants will be left alive. Now the commander had scouted the territory of the rebel ants and had discovered on the edge of the gorge just above the fortress a rock about the shape and size of a football, which, of course, was a huge boulder as ants measure size. It was quite a simple matter for the field engineers of the king's army to dig a tunnel under the boulder and carry it out several thousand grains of sand one at a time until the boulder tumbled over the side of the gorge and landed with a mighty crash at the top of, of, at the top of Swindle's Fort, grinding it to dust. Then, rolling on into the water, it dammed up the stream, thereby forming the lake that completely covered the city that rebel ants had built around the fortress of their wicked chief. The beautiful waterfall at the lower end of the lake is known to this day as Boulder Dam. From all parts of Aunt Ovia, tourist ants travel to see it. As they look at the great rock and the water splashing over it, they are reminded of what a wonderful ruler they have in King Justice and of how wicked and foolish it was for the rebel ants not to love and obey him. Let's pray. Lord, we are grateful that you love us and care for us, and we pray that you would help us to see your mercy and your justice and your love for us. Thank you, Lord, for your provision for us, and help us to love you. In Jesus' name, amen.